the human bone anatomy, particularly the cranium. So we will go over the major bones that make up the human skull, the various sutures, the side profile, the anterior profile, and this will be a two-part video. Um, on the second video, we'll go over the rest of the um, landmarks and um, various regions in the inside of the skull and the underside. But first, starting with the frontal view. This large piece of bone here is called the frontal bone. This whole region is the frontal bone. And over here, this part, and on the other side, we have the left and right parietal bones. They're just called the parietal bones. And over here is the um, uh, temporal bone. Your temples is where you find the temporal bone. And back here is the occipital bone, the back of the head. Now, if you recall from the previous video on human muscle anatomy, um, we call this the frontal belly of the epicranius, the temporalis. So the names are very similar. So hopefully it will be easier to remember. Now, the various sutures that divides the different bones. This suture um, that separates the frontal bone from the parietal bones is called the coronal suture. And the name is derived from the word um, crown, which makes sense because if you were to place a crown on the top of the skull, you'll place it just over the coronal suture. And over here, it kind of got all over my finger. I try to draw a red line to show you um, how they're separated, where the suture is found. But this suture here that separates the temporal bone from the parietal bone is called the um, uh, squamosal suture that goes like this, square muscle suture that will be found here. Okay, And looking at the back of the head, what separates the occipital bone from the parietal bones is this suture that arches around the back and this is called the lambdoidal suture, the lambdoidal suture. And this suture in the mid-sagittal plane, if we were to bisect the skull in two equal halves, um, right along here, the mid-sagittal plane, um, you'll find the sagittal suture. This is a sagittal suture. Okay, And let's um, focus our attention to the temporal region. So the temporal bone, you'll find this protrusion here, right here. And you could actually, if you were to put your finger um, right behind your ear, you could feel it. And this is called the mastoid process. This is the mastoid process. And just behind it, there's another protrusion this is the styloid, oh, my hand's covering it. This is called the styloid process. Mastoid process, styloid process. And in between these processes and just above, there should be a hole here. This is your ear hole. And it's called the external acoustic meatus. And you could also call it the external auditory meatus. And in the later video, you'll um, see that this hole is connected to. Um, the inside of the skull, which will open up, um, and you'll see um, um, an exit. The exiting hole inside the skull is called the internal acoustic meatus or the internal auditory uh, meatus. So, this is the zygomatic bone, and I marked it to show you that there are um, different processes within this bone and they're called different things. Within the zygomatic bone, the processes are named not after the bone where it is found, um, but um, it's named after the neighbor, um, the, the neighboring um, bone. So for, for example, the, we've already identified this region as the frontal bone. So this process is the frontal process of the zygomatic bone. And we know that this is the temporal bone, so this is the temporal process of the zygomatic bone. And this is the maxima, uh, maxilla, so this process is called the maxillary process of the zygomatic bone. And likewise, looking at this process that's protruding out of the temporal bone, this is the zygomatic process because its neighbor is the zygomatic bone, zygomatic process of the um, temporal bone. Hope that makes sense, how they're named. And this right here is the sphenoid bone. Sphenoid bone. Okay. Looking at the mandible, here the lower jaw is what we call the mandible. 
uh, there are different regions with different names. So this is the body of the mandible. This is the angle. And this sticky out thing, this is called the uh, mandibular process. And if I were to take this out, over here there's a little indentation. This is the uh, mandibular fossa. So the mandibular process sits on, uh, sits into the mandibular fossa. And this protrusion right here is the coronoid process. Coronoid process, mandibular um, condyle. Did I call it mandibular process? I think I did. Let me take it back, rewind. So this is the uh, coronoid process, but this is actually not called a process. This is called the mandibular um, condyle, which sits in the mandibular fossa. Hope I didn't confuse you too much. So looking at the mandible again, so over here, um, you can't really see, but there should be a hole here and a hole there wh where the mental nerve uh, come out of. So the mental nerve here uh, comes out of this hole called the mental foramen. Foramen just means a hole, and um, foramina is the plural version of foramen. So over here, you can't see, but there should be... Um, it should be a rough surface, and um, depending on the location of the the little um, um, roughness, <laughs> uh, they're called different things. So over here on the very bottom of the chin would be called um, the mental um, protuberance. Mental protuberance will be found here, and just above the mental protuberance, you'll find the mental tubercle or mental tuberosity. It's a rough surface um, on the chin. And the um, just above the mental tubercle or mental um, tuberosity, you'll find the uh, mental foramina. Right? So this is our maxilla. Right? So if we were to look just above the teeth, this area here and this area there, um, we will call these two areas the um, um, alveolar processes. So this is an alveolar process and this is also an alveolar process. I think uh, now let me see if that looks okay. I'll bring it forward closer, closer, that's good. Okay, so let's identify um, the um, this area here. So these are the eye sockets and these are the um, uh, orbital surfaces. So um, if you, the orbital surface is all around here on the eye socket, the outer parts. If you look at the upper edge of the um, of each of the eye sockets, you'll see a little hole here and a little hole there. They're called the um, supraorbital foramina. Okay, right at the brow region, and um, just below it, you'll find two more holes. These are the infraorbital foramina, which makes sense because whether it's called supra or infra, it's in relation to the orbital surface. So the, these holes just so happen to be above the orbital surfaces, while these holes are below the orbital surfaces, hence the name. Supraorbital foramina, infraorbital foramina, um, um, orbital surfaces. And between the eyebrow and above the nasal bone, this area, this space, is called the glabella. Glabella is the name of the space between the eyebrow and above the nasal bone. Okay, So I try to draw a line here, right in the middle of the nasal bone. This is called the internasal suture. So this is a suture, another suture that runs uh, directly in the center of the nasal bone the internasal suture. Okay, If you look inside the eye socket, over here you can't see it at all, um, and over here you can. You see this little hole and this little um, crack here? <laughs> um, this is called the supraorbital fissure. fissure. 
and this is the infraorbital fissure. So these holes are um, conveniently named and hopefully they're, they're easy to remember because this is the supraorbital foramen, this is the supraorbra, uh, supraorbital fissure, infraorbital foramen, infraorbital fissure. Um, what else? So if you were to look, let's go back to the side profile. Look at the nasal bone. This is again the nasal bone. Next to it, um, you see that indentation? That indentation is called the lacrimal foramen. I think it's the tear duct. So this is the uh, hole that's called the lacrimal foramen. And it just so happened to sit on this bone, this bone in this region which is called the lacrimal bone. So lacrimal foramen is found on the lacrimal bone. Let's look at the nasal cavity here, this area, the hole. Okay, In the nasal cavity, you see the sticky out thing in the corner on the sides. There's one here, there's one there. This is called the, um, the inferior nasal concha. So if there's an inferior nasal concha, there must be a middle and a superior. Well, at least a superior nasal concha, right? You can't see the superior in this model, but it's up there. And if this is an um, inferior nasal concha, there's also a middle, which is, let me get it, bring it close. Like right here's the inferior nasal concha. So this is the middle nasal concha. And this plate that runs perpendicular to the horizontal plane, so if I were to draw an X, uh, X and Y axes, this plate runs perpendicular to the horizontal axis, and this plate is, just so happened to be called, the perpendicular plate. Easy to remember, right? So perpendicular plate, and at the base, this right here is the Vollmer bone. Well, th not this whole thing, but it should be around here. The Vollmer bone is found there. And this protrusion, the sticky out thing, let's look at the side profile. You can see that this sticks out a little bit. That is called the anterior nasal spine. The anterior nasal spine. Okay. Um, let's see, what else? Um, so these bones here, or it's one bone, um, this, you can see it here and there where the um, superior and, um, or I'm sorry, supraorbital and infraorbital fissures are found. Um, that bone is called the ethmoid bone, ethmoid, E-T-H-M-O-I-D, ethmoid bone. Okay. Um, I think that's pretty much it. I think we covered everything. Um, on the next video, we'll go over the underside of the skull and we'll open this up to look at the inside.